Hello everyone, in this lecture we are going to learn about, documents of ASME Section 8 Division 2. Our flagship courses are, Master Static Equipment Design, and PVE Light, ASME Section 8 Division 2, and Master Welded Storage Tank, as per API 650. We have curated courses to suit your learning needs, so do visit our learning platform for more details on scutoid.thinkific.com. Part 1. General Requirement. Okay, so from here your actual code is starting. So, introduction. So, basically code talks about mandatory requirements. There are also specific prohibitions. Okay, something prohibited. That also it will mention. And then non-mandatory guidance. Okay, it's not mandatory for us to follow. But definitely, if something is there for us to follow, it becomes a very good thing. Okay, because then we can refer and we can justify to anyone, even if you are taking from non-mandatory. Okay, so for a designer or inspector, it's a very good guideline. So it will mention mandatory requirements, specific prohibition, and non-mandatory guidelines for everything, starting from design, material, fabrication, examinations inspection testing over pressure protection and certification okay so it will talk about the mandatory requirements for design specific prohibitions for design and non-mandatory guidance for design okay? same thing for material also it will talk about and all the other parts okay so that is the first statement of the scope part now let us talk a little bit about definitions so every chapter will have some definitions. Uh, but these are very important ones. So let us first go with that. And it is basically related to the documentation part. Okay, the additional documents which you prepare. The first of the list is certificate of compliance. What is that? Who made that? Anyone had seen certificate of compliance MTC U2? So, so the, any division 2 design start with user design specification UDS. Okay. UDS is a document which will give you the inputs related to the complete design. Okay. Now, have you felt when you are designing for division one, have you felt that most of the time we struggle with the inputs which are, uh, which should be given by client, but either you are assuming from something or taking reference from somewhere. Have you felt that in division one design that you are always struggling with taking inputs from here and there. Okay. And then it becomes basically your responsibility to, to compile all that. You know, uh, inputs and then start your design. Okay. So it's a very painful thing. And that is where most of the time problem happens. You know, you took some assumptions, you made the design and later on it was found that that assumption was not valid. So again, you have to change the complete design. Okay. Most of the time our error comes because of that. So that is completely eliminated here in division two, because your design will start with user design specification. UDS. There will be a document which will compile all the input data. All the data should be there in that. You don't have to refer any other document. There will be a user defined specification, which is responsibility of user, your client. Okay. And if there is fatigue, it has to be even certified by a certifying engineer. Okay. So certifying engineer who is will talk about what is the qualification for that. So basically you can consider a international PE or professional engineer, which are there in USA. So they are authorized to certify what they will certify that this UDS is sufficient for design. Okay. All the inputs which are required has been taken care of. Okay. See, Event division two gives you complete requirement what should be there in UDS. Okay, well, we are going to see that in detail, so don't worry about it. So we will be making even an Excel sheet, okay, which you can use for 
compliance you know any times you have to either check uds or prepare uds what are the things which should be there okay very clearly given in division 2 and we'll follow that so you know, if fatigue is applicable then it has to be even certified by certifying engineer okay so that all the requirements which should be there for designer that is available in single document okay it may refer to other documents but all will become part of that uds and then that will be given to you for design so you no know, i know to and fro no asking a questions from every time and getting the inputs from email and then multiple emails communication gets lost okay that will not happen okay so good thing it typically looks like this the compliance which is signed by professional engineer even it can be signed by engineer if it is uh, not uh, no, fatigue is not a requirement okay so this document so see you can read it so certifying engineer is certifying okay that i based on my competency i am certifying that this document okay is good for further use okay so basically he is taking the responsibility now the, there will be another certificate of compliance for manufacturer design report also okay when now you are designing your design report will also require one compliance at all the requirements which all the loads which are there in uds and all the code requirements are completely fulfilled okay so there will be again a document like this which the certifying engineer will sign okay and that certifying engineer has to be different from the certifying engineer who is signing the first document making sense the uds is one document which is given by client there is a professional engineer or certifying engineer signing that document there is manufacturer's data report or design report signed by another certifying engineer both engineer should be different it cannot be same agency making sense so like many times uh the you know when the law came first what company started doing that you know like uh lloyds and registry there okay lnr they started two different branches okay given different name so that they can certify both the documents but then it was completely said that any organization you know even from the top if if they are getting merged it cannot sign both the documents making sense is it clear yes so that is the certificate of compliance okay that you are complying certificate of authorization okay what is this there's a document like this which is given by asme you know once that manufacturer getting getting authorized if he's getting that stamping the u2 stamp he'll be getting this document certificate of authorization okay so company name address you know the scope also and that facility that location see that certification is given to particular location okay if i'm a abc company i'm having office in x location and also having of uh, means fabrication unit at x location and having another at y location so the certification has to be there for both separately evaluation will be done separately for each location okay they will maintain their own certificate of authorization making sense not like one uh, unit is certified and you can open any fabrication shop anywhere and do that no each and every unit has to be independently certified okay so once this kind of certificate of authorization is there then you can definitely you know fabricate a u2 stamp job we are talking about division 2 so certification mark like this okay uh you can use on your job how you use it you use it by in terms of certification mark which is like 
nameplate okay, that is your certification mark so here your certification mark will go and all the other details which are required so basically a nameplate which we use for the certification that is a certification from the manufacturer okay UDS okay we have spoken about this user design specification which is you know a document which covers everything okay the complete detail what should be there like design data the load combination fatigue uh, if nozzle allowable loads whatever clients want to mention everything okay should be there in this document okay and that will be followed by you so very clear guideline is there by asme section 8 division 2 that what should be there in this UDS, like I mentioned, has to be, you know, accompanied with a certification, certificate of compliance, okay, which will be signed by cert certified engineer, okay. But not always. Once it is, you know, we'll see the conditions which is there. So basically, when fatigue is there, it has to be signed. Okay. Material test report, okay. So the sample material test report which has to be there for every material okay which mentions you know the chemical analysis physical properties heat treatment done on that so everything should be there for in-depth training and to learn more about these courses register with the link in the description